Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's Adli Atta here. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to be kicking off a new video series and that video series is going to be around my home server. My home server's name is Alfred. So Alfred is in need of a little bit of tuning, a little bit of upgrade. You'll see on the channel here that we had Alfred running and a couple of services that he was already running. If you want to check the video, you can, but that's the revival of him. Today we're going to be introducing Alfred 1.5 as we do some upgrades to him. And I'm going to give you an overview of my network and how he's integrated at the moment, discuss some of the problems that we have, and then in the series, as we go through it, you'll see how I'm going to solve some of those problems. So I've mind mapped that out a little bit. I'll show you that on the PC in the next few clips. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a series as we digest these kind of things. And if you guys have ideas or questions around it, this is going to be the series that should hopefully answer those or that you can help me to do a better job at it. So let me show you Alfred. Let me show you some of the quick upgrades that are going to be done and then we'll jump over to the PC. Boom. So you guys are used to seeing this view behind me, right? With the uh, nice bookshelf behind me. And you'll probably see this in my YouTube videos or if you come and catch me on Twitch, you'll see the same thing when I live stream. Here's a little bit of behind the scenes. This is my, uh, my desk here. And this is Alfred. So if you have not been introduced, Alfred, say hello. There we go. Okay. In Alfred, we can store a whole bunch of drives. So one of the first things we're going to do on a physical layer is not all of these are full. Bloop. Empty. So we're going to throw in a couple of new drives. This drive over here is failing, so it does need to be replaced. And this drive in here is currently hosting my data and is running the OS. But it is a slow drive. So one of the first things that we're going to do this is a minor physical upgrade. I'm going to be putting a new hard drives into him. So I've got an SSD in here and a normal 2.5 drive in this box over here that I'm going to be using. Uh, your editing tower in here. I just found out that that second drive has got some bad sectors, which means it's unhealthy. We can't trust it. It's not going to go into Alfred. We're just going to stick to the SSD. Okay, back to the video. And these are just brackets to actually mount them. So two new drives into Alfred. Give us a bit of speed boost and a little bit more storage capacity. This will make a lot more sense once you've actually seen a mind map of what my current network looks like and how it is set up, um, what the problems we're currently facing and what the solutions are. So let's jump onto the computer and I'll show you that so you can see what it looks like and how we're going to move forward in this series with some upgrades to Alfred and the, the home network. Let's go. I have already gone ahead and created our diagram of my current network setup and what the future design is using a draw IO. That's what's on the screen here. Let me just run through this very quickly with you guys so you know what is um, the current setup and what the plan is moving forward. Uh, let's start here on the left hand side. As you can see, fiber breakout, right? Fiber is how we get to the internet. What you guys don't know is that this current fiber breakout is actually sitting in a separate building to the one that I am in on the same property. So I have a cable that runs from that router into a switch. This switch is actually located on the far end of this building, all the way down that way, down a long passageway. Um, and that is how uh, the internet actually comes into this property or into this building. Now we have a cable that runs from that into my Wi-Fi access point. This is how we get internet onto that side of the house. There's no other wires that side is not necessary. Uh, we mainly on that side have everything connected via the Wi-Fi, like our phones and stuff when we're on that side of the building. And um, that is how we actually connect to the Android TV box using Wi-Fi. I have a whole video about that TV box. It's on the channel. You can check that out if you want, but that's how we watch Netflix and stuff like that. Um, and how we get to all the other stuff that we're gonna show you now later um, using the Wi-Fi. Down the long passageway and the, the ceiling that I had to climb in, um, I ran this long cable, which comes into a little switch that is sitting down there that you guys can't see. Um, that's a little Microtech switch. That Microtech switch is uh, uh, Wi-Fi capable. And so this Wi-Fi that you see on here, that little symbol, is because when I'm on this side of the building, I need Wi-Fi for my phone um, and my wife stuff, which is on that side of the um, office that you can't see is how she connects her laptops for work and stuff like that. There's a cable that runs directly from that into my PC and another cable that runs directly from 
the switch into our server, into Alfred. So Alfred 1.1, um, which is what we currently have at the moment. He is running Ubuntu 20.10. That is a revision of Ubuntu that it is on currently. Um, there are two hard drives in him at the moment. The one drive is the OS. It is also the data share at the moment. Um, the other drive is a drive that is in there. It's a legacy drive. It is old. It is failing. It needs to go. Um, I don't trust it for to store any data. It's only in there and is only used if I need to pull old data from um, long ago. But it, it needs to be chucked out. The other current shares that it is, has at the moment is it is a Samba share. So there are um, network share folders on there that I use to move data between different fold, uh, different PCs. Or if I want to back anything up, I can throw uh, it into a network share. It is also a Plex server. What is Plex, you may ask? Well, Plex is a way of basically organizing and connect, collecting your uh, different types of media. So it can host podcasts, it can host uh, music. Mainly what they're very well known for is being a place to store your movies and your series. So I have a whole bunch of DVDs over here somewhere that uh, I've been ripping and converting so that I can store them on Alfred. So that we don't have to dig around for DVDs when we want to watch a particular movie again. We can just have it on the server and all this will uh, run through the network via the Wi-Fi back up into our TV or our laptops or anything else that we want to watch it on. That's what Plex does. It hosts and organizes and makes very pretty um, your uh, videos and series, your movies and series, should I say. Um, it does the job. It's quite well. Um, Bolted onto him is another sub-service that is running for series management, which basically is how I keep track of when the next episode is coming out and, and stuff like that. This series management system is also hasn't been working very well uh, recently, um, which is one of the things that needs to be addressed. But we'll get to problems next. Dynamic DNS. This uh, service, this server, should I say, runs a little service that does dynamic DNS updates. What is that, Tyrone? You, you know, you got the good questions. I don't want to jump into a whole story about this because it can be a little complicated, but essentially when your fiber router is restarted by load shedding or power outages or your maid unplugging it and plugging it back in or your ISP deciding something needs to change, the public facing IP address changes each time that happens. Public facing IP addresses are hard to remember. Uh, no one really runs by IP addresses in uh, the modern era. Everyone uses a name for something. So you could go to easytoremember.com and that will take you to a website. There's an IP address behind that. What a dynamic DNS service does is each time my public facing IP address changes, it phones home to a service, tells it, hey, the IP address has changed and it keeps it in sync with a host name that I've given it. Um, yeah, I think that's that's an easy easy uh, explanation of it. So if I need to get into this network to go to Plex or to get to a shared folder or remote in for whatever reason, I can type in tyrantseasytoremember.com and it'll get me into my network. That's not that's not the right name. So please don't go there. I don't know what's going to come up if you type that in. Hopefully nothing. Um, but you have been warned. It is not mine. Let's talk about the problems faced uh, with our current setup, right? So Alfred, it's a bit slow. Um, it's sluggish when it comes to booting and um, some of the services could be a little bit snappier. And that is granted that the server is a little bit on the old side, but I think that it could do better if we uh, freshen up the OS. The other thing and one of the bigger issues is cloud, cloud storage. So Google Photos, or as I got written down there, Google Drive. Um, Google Drive has shared space for a free account. It's 15 gigs for um, a standard account. That is a shared amount between your emails and your photos and whatever else you've got in Google Drive um, backing up. 15 gigs isn't a lot of space, to be honest with you. And at one point, Google Photos had this really cool feature that every single time I took a photo, it would upload and back up automatically for me. And that wouldn't count towards your um, 
your shared space because you had it in a particular signed up high quality mode. 1st of June, they have uh, said that they are going to change that. So all your photo moving forward from the 1st of June will count your photos and videos that you're backing up will count towards your um, shared storage limit of 15 gigs. Or I have I have 17 gigs, but anyway, if you want more space, you got to pay for it. The same thing comes when it comes to Dropbox. Um, they both have space limitations to them. Dropbox, um, I don't remember what the standard space limitation is, but as a service, they also frustrate me because they change things. So a free account, you could basically have as many devices originally as you wanted. They then went and updated it. They said, okay, if you are on a free account, you have a maximum of three. You can only have three devices that are syncing your data up and down. If you want more, pay for more or deactivate one and reactivate a new um, a new install. And that frustrates me because I have more than three devices that I want to sync my data between. Um, again, if you want more space, you pay for it. And really, this is one of those things that if you're beholden to the, the cloud storage solution that you choose, if they decide that a particular feature is now more premium, so if Dropbox decides that they are going to do some complex thing to get more shares or amount of shares that you can have between people and they want you to pay for that, you have no choice. You pay. Or you choose a different service. Um, yeah, so those those cost money and they're not exactly cheap. Um, they're competitively priced, but we'll, we'll discuss that as we go through the, serv the uh, solutions later in the series. Um, another thing is a, I really think we need a password manager. So my wife and I, obviously we have certain accounts that we're sharing. Um, and if something happens and one of us needs to log in, there's always these messages that we're sending to each other saying, Hey, do you, do you remember the password for this? Or how do I log into this? What's the credentials? Um, so I think a password manager would be an easy way for us to basically share that. It also helps to get passwords a little bit more complex. And that's a whole nother series that we're going to have. Um, around passwords and security, but I think we need to to do that. And basically, there are a lot of options out there in terms of password managers. I know that LastPass just made a change in theirs where they said, "Hey, if you have a free account, um, yeah, you can only keep your passwords on one one uh, device at a time. If you log in on another one, it log you out of the other, which is frustrating for people who want to use it on their phones and on their computers. If you want to pay, you can get more than one device, but yeah, that's, that's one of the things that frustrates me about these other services. Also, who do you trust to keep your password safe? Um, I have a couple of options here. I mean, you could go to Bitwarden, you can go to a couple of things, but as we go through the series, we'll, we'll look at those. Another thing, I don't actually like Plex. <laughs> it's a really cool service, and as we go through the series, we will talk about it more in depth, but one of the things that frustrates me about it is that it doesn't work offline. If uh, the internet is down and I want to watch a DVD that I have on my Plex server, I can't. It just doesn't work because it has to phone home first to validate that I am allowed to log into Plex. Um, yes, I know there are workarounds, but I shouldn't have to have my, by default, my Plex uh, phoning to their servers to first let me watch stuff that I have saved locally. Right? You with me? Again. We'll look at Plex, we'll look at different solutions as we go through the series. When it comes to dynamic DNS, this to me is a bit of a security thing. Now, I don't want to get too much into the thick of this, but if you're running a dynamic DNS service, you normally have to put your server into a DMZ on your router. What does that mean? Well, basically it involves things called port forwarding, which basically exposes a portion of your network to the outside internet and that can be very risky if you don't know how to set things up properly it's it's just a, a place for hackers to play if they are hunting around your um hunting around the internet and there are tons of services that do that they literally just look around for exposed plex servers if you uh, have been watching the news there was a whole thing about this where plex servers were being used to do uh, ddos attacks yeah ddos attacks i don't want um to take risks like that so if i can i would rather figure out a way to, to get into my network, get into the side of the, um, from the outside into my network without running a DNS. Not, 
not jumping too far ahead, we will, we again, we'll discuss those things as we go through the series. So let's look at the new home server design. So from the top, um, starting off the fiber breakout, getting to the internet, the Ruba access point, the um, smart TV, none of that's going to change. What does change is what you'll see here by this orange line as we come back down into Alfred. Now, Alfred um, 1.5, this is the plan. I have first need to figure out how we're going to get him to be a little bit more snappier instead of slow and sluggish with boot. So I had a few options here. My first option was, do we take um, a snap of Ubuntu and wipe it off and put Ubuntu server on? And that could work. I mean, that would definitely help because the, the uh, user interface or the GUI of an operating system is a bit taxing. But that means that if I want to do anything, I have to use a terminal like this. So every single time that I want to do something, I have to go and type in terminal. There's no, there's no user interface. This is it. Um, that intimidates me a little bit. I like to be able to get in and look at things via user interface if I can. Um, I could go and install something like web admin, which is a um, software package for Ubuntu. And then I could just get two things via a website. And that works, sure. But another solution that I thought might be easier is to just use a different flavor of Ubuntu. And so you get one called Zubuntu which is why the symbol has changed to this little mouse. It is basically a very stripped down, easier to use, uh, snappier user interface. Um, it's a bit more basic. So I have a, the benefit of a user interface. I can store remote into it. I can still do a whole bunch of other things. It's just a little bit less taxing. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to put an SSD into it. So the SSD is going to be our um, OS um, host. And that is where the little bit of data will live, but that's where the operating system is going to go. We're going to check out the current drive that is failing and shift over the current other drive that is known and good and healthy to just be a core um, data storage space. There are other bays that are available. And hopefully when we have time or we get the resources, we can update Alfred from 1.5 to a newer version as we constantly try and improve things. And one of those improvements will be to install more hard drives. Now, starting from the bottom here, we've got something called zero tier one. Now, this is my replacement of dynamic DNS. Again, as we go through the series, we will discuss this in more detail, but what zero tier basically does is it creates a VPN. So there you connect your zero tier instance to a virtual controller. That virtual controller is your, um, VPN controller. And instead of things being publicly facing, everything goes through a VPN between me on the outside and me on the inside. And that's why you see this orange line here. So zero tier one will connect my server to internets, to the internets. And that's how we'll use um, this whole setup. Instead of using dynamic DNS, if I need to access things, I can access it from the outside via a zero tier one network. Again, this is a series. So we will discuss that and explain that more as we carry on in the series. The other thing, and one of the bigger ideas is we need to get to uh, cloud storage. So instead of running everything on Google Drive and Dropbox and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I want to install Nextcloud on here. Nextcloud is basically a Google Suite uh, replacement or an Office uh, 365 replacement. The whole idea here is that it can do a whole bunch of things. And that is definitely going to be a video in and of itself as I explain that. But it's, it is the, has the ability to sync data between different devices and store and backup stuff. Attached to this, you'll see there's a line here for a password manager. Now that service is something that Nextcloud has in it and that solves the other thing. I want to have a password manager. I've tested one in Nextcloud. I'm quite happy with it. So I could do things that way. Um, the other option was for me to put in something like Bitwarden, but we'll get to password and password management in this series at some point. Um, Jellyfin. What is Jellyfin? Jellyfin will be the replacement I'm thinking of putting in to replace Plex. Um, it is an open source media server replacement. It has the same type of 
idea behind Plex. There's a server side, there's a client side. You install both of them and it does the same things as Plex. Um, I have not tested this as intensely yet, but that's what the series is about, improving what we currently have and replacing things that we currently have with something that hopefully is better. And that's what Jellyfin should be. All of this will run through the network as it currently does via the server. And you can see here, we've got these lines that are orange. Um, that is how we connect to Nextcloud from the outside. It's how we can connect to Jellyfin and watch things on my phone if I wanted to, um, when I'm outside of the house, or if I'm on a business trip, whatever it might be, I can go ahead and just watch things from anywhere via um, zero tier being our connection to these services. That's why you got these orange lines here. But that's it. Very simple, but that should actually solve a lot of things. And as, as we go through the series, guys, we'll explain more of this, but that should solve a lot of things in our network currently, and it should make things a lot easier for us. Um, and it should, should be quite cool. I'm very excited to see where we go with these things. You'll see that if I have gotten to them yet, on um, the top here, there will be a playlist that you can check out for um, this series on the channel. Um, otherwise, if I haven't done anything yet and you want to say, hey, don't use that, use this instead, put it in the comments. I want to do this well. I want to do this in a way that is good and um, I can learn some things. So if you want to see or you want to give me suggestions as we carry on, hit me up down in the comments or on the videos in the playlist. Um, we can discuss and we can see um, how we can make this work well. And something else that I had an idea with that is not on here is something like a an ad blocker, like via a Dockerized version of uh, a pie hole. We can block ads for the entire network by that kind of thing. But that's going to be it for today. Um, please check out the other videos in the series. Let me know what you think. I'm happy to uh, chat more about this with you guys. And I will see you guys soon. Until then, live long and rock on.